Hi, I'm Ron Bates, Senior Pastor of The Light Church. Thank you so much for tuning into our podcast today. I hope this message inspires you to love God, love people, and shine His light. Good morning, church. It's a great morning to be in the house of the Lord. We're going to come this morning with praise and thanksgiving on this Thanksgiving week. Y'all ready to worship our King? Let's do it. Feel a face. 
sing it out. You can make the chains come loose. You can tell the mountains move. Even the impossible, it's possible for you. Even the impossible, it's possible for you. To the secret place, just an altar and a Love is found here, and I say it's faint. I hear your voice, I see your Just for you and me, break the bread and pour the wine. Lift your voice.
you see us. We are not forgotten. We are not abandoned. We are adored by our Heavenly Father. So this morning, I encourage you, pour out your love to Him because He is a God, a Father who adores you.
just the voices that sing us out.
Come on, give him praise. Give him thanks he deserves this morning. He's a good God. Oh, man, how many of you want to go deeper with him? How many of you want to go farther, as far as he can take you, amen? We want to do that, and we can do that by lingering with him. You know the word linger in Hebrew, it, it means to wait. But it doesn't just mean to wait impatiently. It means to wait with an expectation. It's the word tarry when God told his people to wait on the Holy Spirit. He was going to come. It's to wait with an expectation. And what a great place to wait. Just wait on the Lord and in his presence. He is our help. Amen. You know, Isaiah 25 said, Lord, I will praise you. You are my help. You are help to the needy, help to the poor. Father, you are a refuge in the storm. Amen. Let's give him praise this morning. He deserves all the praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Good to have you here at the light. Welcome. We're glad you're here. If you're visiting, we're especially glad you're here. And welcome to those online. Give them a hand. Glad they're here as well. As you can see, I'm flying solo today. Ava is not here. She is in Colorado Springs. Actually, she's on a plane on her way back. She was at a Gateway Pastor's Wives event, so I know she had a good time there. And you might miss her, but I miss her more. I'm glad she's come back, but she had a good time. Glad you are here. Are y'all thankful this morning? I am so thankful. We have so much to be thankful for and um, thankful that you're here. As you find your seat, greet someone and tell them, Happy Thanksgiving! Today is Baptism Sunday. We can praise the Lord for that. Matthew 28, 19 reminds us, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. Everybody say all. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that's what we're going to do this morning. And this morning we're going to baptize Danica. ready to go. She's been smiling ear to ear, and that's just going to continue just talking about Jesus. And she really likes, look at that, she is just a, a princess of the kingdom. And when I reminded her of that, she just was on a whole different level. She's going to be there the rest of her life and for eternity. And when I asked her what comes to mind when I mentioned the word Jesus, and she said top priority. That speaks to all of us right there. So she said she knows who's first in her life, her first love, and she's ready to go share Jesus with all those across her path for now and forever. Danica, based on your confession of Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Awesome. Out there. Don't you love it? At any age, it's never too late find Jesus and profess it. Father, we just thank you for who you are and who we are in you through your son, Jesus Christ. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Good morning and welcome to Church Announcements. I'm Hannah and this is Hunter. We have appeared on your screen to tell you about some exciting events we have coming up. First things first, men, join us for free breakfast on the first Saturday of every month. Our Giving Tree Outreach is a ministry that allows families in need to privately sign their kids up to receive Christmas gifts. Families in the church can sign up to shop for these children. The Giving Tree is from November 27th through December 18th. You can sign up to have your child blessed until December 18th. Christmas Eve practice starts December 4th, so if you want to join our adult and kids choir, now is the time to sign up. All information is on our website. Don't wait. Sign up today. Lastly, at The Light, our heart is to care for all those who call The Light their church home. Whether you've been attending for a week or a decade, we'd love to share our heart with you and invite you to join in on what God is doing here at The Light. Come to our Become a Member class to learn our vision plan and how to get involved. We would love to see you there so we can answer any questions you have about the church. 
since this week is a chill week, you know, just you hanging out, eating some food, not cranberry sauce, with your fam bam, we decided to entertain you with the world's funniest Thanksgiving jokes to ever exist. They'll for sure make you LOL. So funny. Ha <laughs> ha. Hey, Hunter. Huh? You think Thanksgiving dinner is done? You ain't seen stuffing yet. That's bad. You know, Hannah? What? My family told me to stop telling Thanksgiving jokes, but I said I just couldn't quit cold turkey. Hey, where'd you find this recipe? Google, Google. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. He thought that would be funny. What do you call a running turkey? What? Fast food. I am who I am. <laughs> so lame. You want a piece of me? <laughs> hey! Hey! Nobody puts gravy in a corner. It doesn't get any better than this. Last, but not least, enjoy the holiday with your family and we'll see you next Sunday. If this is your first time here, we hope you'll make the light your church home. Be sure to fill out that connect card from the seat back in front of you and drop it off at the info desk. To sign up for any classes and events, go to thelightcf.org or download the Church Center app. Seriously, cranberry sauce is gross. The truth about tithing and one thing you cannot avoid is that God commands us to give generously. There will be times in life when it seems like tithing is the hardest thing to do or even the last thing on our minds. But as Christians, we should aim to steward our God-given resources in such a way that we're able to make tithing a priority. This may mean we need to cut back on some Starbucks or expenses to be able to give. All joking aside, seek the Lord on how you can learn to give. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 7 says, The point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. We're so honored that you choose to give here. You can easily give on our website, on the Church Center app, or you can drop off your donation at one of our giving stations. We love you, Light family. Now please welcome Pastor Ron Bates to the stage. Well, good morning and happy Thanksgiving. Are y'all ready to count your blessings? Well, we're going to do that this morning. You know, I started this series on, for Thanksgiving called Joy of the Harvest. This is the fourth week. And I have to admit, I was thinking, man, I don't know if I'm going to be able to preach four weeks on Thanksgiving. But I'm going to tell you what, there is a lot to say in the Bible about Thanksgiving. There's a lot in there about it. But just a couple things before we get to it. Uh, next week, Ava and I will not be here, but Pastor Clayton Morris will be here speaking. He's, uh, he and Olivia oversee our youth. So he's going to be here next week. And then on December 4th, 4th, I will start a new series entitled Waiting on Christmas. We'll have our two Christmas Eve services, 4 and 6. Invite people to that. And then on New Year's Day, we'll have one service at 11 o'clock. Give God praise. He's good. So uh, I've entitled this series, this sermon this morning, Count Your Blessings. And the meaning of that is that, and we've heard that before. How many of you heard that? Count Your Blessings. It means to focus on the, the positive and not the negative. It means to, you know, don't count all the negative things in your life. The things that you're, you would say, I'm not thankful for, although the Bible tells us to be thankful for all things. But it means to look at all the positive things in your life, to recognize God's hand in your life. And when we do that, we truly are blessed. And of all people, God's people ought to be thankful. And if we're thankful, then we're joyful. And we started this series, the foundation scripture, Isaiah 9, 3, it says this. And again, Isaiah is speaking of a time when Christ comes and what it's going to be like. And he, he describes it to the joy of harvest. He says, you have multiplied the nations and increased its joy. How many of you know he's a God of increase? Two of you. Thank you. And then <laughs> it says, the, they joy before you according to the joy of the harvest. And, and again, that's so hard in our culture for us to understand. You know, when you think about a harvest, prior to the harvest, there, there's got to be some anxiety that, that tries to creep in because you don't know if it's all going to be there. Is it going to rain? Is the harvest going to be plentiful? What's it going to be like? Are we going to have enough laborers and harvesters for this? So there's a lot of anxiety. And when it comes, the provision's there. What a relief it is. When Jesus comes, we can relax 
and be relieved because it's going to be like the joy of the harvest. That's what he says it's going to be like. According to the joy of the harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. Like after a war, they had all these things, and they would divide them up, and God provided that way. So he's a God of increase. So thanksgiving, there's a lot to be said about it. Enter his courts with thanksgiving and praise, and his gates with praise. We are to be thankful to him always. And thankfulness is an attitude. We've heard that attitude of gratitude. It's a disposition that you have. And when I say a disposition, I mean it's something that's just settled in you. It's the character trait of you as a Christian that you should be thankful. Not like Eeyore. How many of you remember Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh? Oh, man, nothing good ever happens to me. And Well, I guess I'm thankful for that. I don't know. It's probably, you know what I'm saying, right? But that's not the way we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be truly thankful. An attitude that just, just that that oozes out of us that says, I am a, how many of you like being around thankful people? And not negative people. We should be that. You know, that's going to attract people to God more than it is being negative. 2 Corinthians 4.15 says this, for all things. Everybody say all things. All things are for your sakes that grace, having spread through the many. In other words, he multiplied the nations. His grace spread through many may cause thanksgiving to abound. Again, a God of increase. Cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. And God, so he expects us to be thankful Remember when Jesus uh, told the, the lepers to go show themselves to the priest and only one came back, the Samaritan? Came back and Jesus asked the question, where are the others? Other, are they not thankful to? Did they not recognize God's hand, God's protection in their life? When we're thankful, we recognize God's hand in our life. And Ephesians 5.20 says that we should be thankful for all things, always, all the time. So, Father, we come to you this morning. We ask that you help us to be a thankful people. Father, not just to say we're thankful, but let it show in our life, in our words, our, our attitude, Father, that we are truly grateful. Father, that we see your hand in our life, that we're abounding with thanksgiving. That we're abounding with thanksgiving, Father, understanding that it's your will. Help us to be mindful of your goodness, of your benefits, Father, so that we will be thankful people always. Father, don't let the enemy cheat us, still rob us out of our joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength, and we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. So I have four points this morning. The first one is this, abounding in thanksgiving. Abounding in thanksgiving. In other words, we should be so thankful. I was thinking about this, abounding. There's, there's so much to be thankful for. If we were to all count our blessings and add them up, who would win? Come on. Well, you, that's a good attitude. That's a good attitude. But you think about it, well, I'm thankful for this and this, this. You know what? Listen, we have one thing that we could all be thankful for, that God sent his son to die for us. Amen? Yeah. Everything else is just stuff. We're not going to be here forever. If we could just grasp the truth that we're just passing through, we're pilgrims passing through. If we just recognize all the stuff we can accumulate, yes, it's God's blessing. He's a God of abundance. But none of it's going to matter in the end. And I'm truly blessed because in the end, I'm going to spend eternity with God. Come on. I'm blessed. Now, I'm thankful that, yes, Paul says, you know, it's not just in this life only. Life only we have hope. We have hope now. We have his provision now. But thank God that I can look beyond all of this and truly be thankful and see his hand in my life. When I think about being thankful, I think about, you know, I mean, if if we went around and asked, are you thankful? Yeah, we could all find something to be thankful for. And if we really tried, we could probably find something to be negative about. (laughs) I mean, look at the past few years and the things that's happened. We've all been affected by some things. And and, and so, yeah, there's some things that we say, well, I don't know what I have to be thankful for. We have much to be thankful for. We just have to recognize it. You know, when I think about this, I think about the what we call the first Thanksgiving in 1621 when the pilgrims on the Mayflower came over, the, the Puritans, they came over, and they had a feast, and they celebrated, and we call that the first Thanksgiving. They came from England on the Mayflower, October 1621. Uh, Governor William Bradford, he held a feast, and we we call that our Thanksgiving. It lasted for three days, but it wasn't until 1863 that Abraham Lincoln declared it a national holiday of Thanksgiving. But I think about these people that came over to America, a new land, and they came on, actually there was two ships. There was the Mayflower and the Speedwell. 
the speed well didn't make it. <laughs> Even with a name like that, it took on a leak. They had to uh, uh, dock, and half the people split. They said, man, I'm not going. Half got on the Mayflower. Think about this. This is a cargo ship. It's a cargo ship. There's no room. And now you got more people cramming into this cargo ship. It wasn't a cruise luxury liner. Come on. And it lasted for two months, 66 days, till they got to America. And, and so there was 102 passengers. There was 60, 37 crew members on this ship. It was stor- there were storms. It was bitter. It was cold. One person died. Now, you know, you think about it. It's, it's such a miracle that just only one person died. And there was one that was born. So they ended up with 102 anyway when they got here. And William Bradford wrote this. When they arrived, and think about all the turmoil, all the things they went through, this is what he wrote. Being thus arrived in a good harbor, I just I saw that right there, and I thought, that's what he recognized, it's a good harbor. It wasn't just, well, it'll do. No, it was good. He recognized that it was good. And brought safe to land, they fell upon their knees and blessed the God of heaven. Uh, with everything that went on, he blessed God and, and recognized his hand on their life, who had brought them over. The vast and furious, the long and rough ocean, and delivered them from all the perils and the miseries thereof. So he recognized God's hand. And I think about this because after they arrived, some people still had to live on the Mayflower because they didn't have homes. So for a long time, people still lived on there. And, 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 and half the people out of 102, half of the people died from diseases and cold, winter, bitter things. So think about this life. They come over. It was rough. They get here. Within the first year, half of them die. Think about 100 people and half of them die. It affects somebody, everybody. Everybody is affected by this. They had a harvest. The first harvest came along, and they brought in the, the corn. So after all of this happened... Edward Winslow wrote this, one of those that came, he wrote this. Our harvest being gotten in, our governor sent four men a-fouling. I guess they went turkey hunting. We don't really know. (laughs) That so we might, after a special manner, rejoice together. Are you kidding me? After all that, you're going to rejoice together. After we had gathered the fruits of our labor, they four in one day killed as much fowl as with a little help besides... Served the company almost a week. In other words, they had Thanksgiving leftovers for a week. At which time, amongst the recreation, I don't think they played football, but they did something fun. We exercised our arms. They went hunting. Many of the Indians coming along uh, amongst us and amongst the rest, their greatest king, Massasoit, with some 90 men whom for three days we entertained and feasted. And they went out... And killed five deer, which they brought to the plantation and bestowed on our governor, William Bradford, and upon the captain and others. And listen to what it says now. He says this. After all this they've gone through, he writes this. And although it be not always so plentiful. Anybody relate to that? (laughs) Although it not always be plentiful, as it was at this time with us, yet by the goodness of God, we are so far from want. That we often wish you partakers of our plenty. In other words, it hadn't always been like this, but it's so good, we wish you were with us. After all they've been through, they still saw God's blessing in his hand on their life that you've blessed us. Can I tell you, we have so much to be thankful for. Come on. So much to be thankful for. What a great attitude after the disease and the loss and the, the, the hardship, all these things. He says, yet we're so grateful, we're thankful to God, and we wish you could share in this with us. You, we wish you were here enjoying this with us. That's thankful. Paul, in chapter 4, when he writes to the Corinthians, he's reminding them to be thankful. He's reminding them that, that they received mercy, and light has come in the darkness, as Isaiah prophes- prophesied. In 2 Corinthians 4, 8, he says this, he says this, and I think about, you know, has anybody suffered anything the last couple of years? Anybody had any difficulties, any trials? And yet he, Winslow, was able to say, yet we're thankful so much so that I wish you were here with us, with us. And I think about the things that we might have gone through and might find it hard to be thankful, but yet Paul reminds the church and he says this, we are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, in other words, scratching our heads, confused about some things, but not in despair. Why? Because God is good. Come on. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. It may have been difficult. It may have been challenging. There may be things I don't understand, but I'm still here by the grace of God, and I'm thankful. 
and I'm thankful that I'm, I'm counting my blessings of how good God is. 2 Corinthians 4.15 says, For all things are for your sakes, that grace, 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 having spread through many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. God's grace causes us to be thankful so much so that it abounds. And when it talks about abounding, that, that word there, abound, is from the word parasiuo. And it means this. It means in abundance, plenty. But it means this. It means to remain at the end. In other words, I'm so thankful, and this may happen, and this may happen in my life, and this is confusing, and this is, it is challenging, and all these things happen. But yet at the end, I have some thankfulness that remains. Come on. I have some leftover that remains. When I think of Thanksgiving, I think of leftovers. Anybody going to have leftovers? I mean, you're going to eat all you can. You're going to wear your stretchy pants. I know you are. You're going to wear your stretchy pants, eat Thanksgiving dinner. But at the end, you're going to have food left over. You're going to have uh, turkey sandwiches for a few days. You're going to have turkey salad. How many of you make, make turkey salad? I, I, I do. I chop it up. I make turkey salad. You're going to have pumpkin pie for a week. That's not so bad. You're going to have leftovers. I don't care what happens in our life. There's still thanksgiving that remains, that abounds because of God's goodness. Nothing that bad that can happen to me can erase the goodness that he has given to me. Somebody give him praise. Come on. And we are thankful for that. Thankful that it, it abounds no matter what we face. Number two, point number two is this. Thankfulness is God's will. We want God, how many of you want God's will to be done? <laughs> then, then we need to be thankful because it's God's will that we're a thankful people. He wants us to be thankful, to recognize his hand in our life, his goodness, his blessings in our life. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 says, Rejoice always. Rejoice always. Praying without, pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So it's God's will for us to be thankful. And I was thinking about this thankfulness, and sometimes we can think it's not that big a deal. Let me just tell you. Thankfulness is a big deal with God. I mean, how, you, how many of you know it's a big deal with your kids? You want them to say thanks. I mean, when they finally learn to look at somebody and say thank you, you're so proud. You're like, that's my kid. There. You know, taught him well. He wants us to have the character of thankfulness, the, the attribute of being thankful. 2 Timothy 3.1, Paul says this, but know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. How many of you believe that? Come on. So he's talking about these things that are going to come. He says, men will be lovers of themselves. They're going to be selfish, you know. Lovers of themselves, lovers of money, greed, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents. They're going to be rebellious. All these things that he's listing. But look at the next one there, unthankful. Unthankful. Would you put that in there? I don't know. Unthankful is listed with all these others. Unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, uh, brutal. In other words, violent. We're seeing that, Dis, uh, you know, uh, uh, despisers of the truth, traitors, headstrong, all these things, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, all these things, and uh, in the midst of all those, he lists unthankful. Let's don't be unthankful. Let's be thankful to God for all of his goodness. The word unthankful means to be negative or have a, you know, a negative character about you, one that fails to see the good around you. To fail, that fails to see God's hand, God's uh, involvement in your life all around you. Unable to see these things. So I, I thought about this. Be thankful for the clothes in the laundry. Come on. Give God thanks. Because you have clothes to put on. Come on. Be thankful when clothes fit tight. It means you've had plenty to eat. Come on. Be Don't look at the negative. Look at the positive. Be thankful for the mess after the meal. Why? Because it shows that you have family and friends that gather. Man, look at this mess. Yeah, but what about the family and friends? Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Be thankful for the lawn that needs cutting, the house that needs to be painted. Why? Because God's provided shelter for me. He's provided for me. Be thankful for the wife or the husband when they ask for your help to do something. Why? Because you have a wife or a husband. When a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing, the Bible says. Be thankful for the early morning alarm when it goes off. It means that you have a job to go to means that you're alive. Be thankful. Be thankful for the person behind you that sings off key. Because it means you can hear. Everybody turn around and say, thank you. (laughs) 
You've heard the term, I can't see the forest for the trees, right? Where's the forest at? I don't know. All I see is trees. Well, what it means, you know, what that's supposed to mean is that you can't see what's right there. And so many times we can't see God right there. Just the little things in our life that he's doing to be so thankful for. I remember one time I was, years ago, I had a uh, Dodge Ram, uh, which was like a uh, Ford Bronco. It's an old, you know, two-door SUV type thing. Didn't run good at all. And I, I was going somewhere one time, and I was at an intersection, and the light was gr- red. And when it turned green, I pushed the accelerator, and it started to take off, and it just died right there. And I went to start it, and as soon as I turned the key, a car ran the red light. I was thankful. Come on. Lord, I thank you for this old beat-up truck that won't go when it's supposed to. Come on. Lord, I thank you for that carburetor. I'm thankful. You know, an interesting thing about it, it started up after that, you know, all the time. I can't see God. I just see trees. Come on. No, that was God. I recognize God. I'm thankful that you're in my life. I'm thankful that you're there, Father. Romans 1.20 says, For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, in other words, the things that you can't see about God, they're clearly seen. Well, I I just wish I could see God. Look around. Look around at all the creation and everything that's around you. It's right there in front of you. You can see him. His invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. You're without excuse to not see God. Because although they knew God, listen to this, they did not glorify him as God, nor were they thankful. It's a big deal to be thankful. But futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened. Because why? Because they weren't thankful. We need to check our attitude. Lord, am I thankful? Lord, let me wake up with a thankful heart and go to bed praising you for the day. Come on. Thankful, hopeful, joyful, all these things are part of being thankful. Number three is this. Thankfulness requires thoughtfulness. If we're going to be thankful, we have to think about some things. We have to think about God's involvement in our life. I have to be mindful of God if I'm going to be thankful. I have to count my blessings, make a mental inventory, mental inventory of, of the goodness of God in my life. Lord, when I think about your goodness, come on, I can't help but to give you praise. I think about his mercy, his grace, his, his health, his provision that he provides for me and what he's able to do, what he has done, what he will do. You know, thankfulness is defined as being pleased or relieved, satisfied. I'm thankful. Just being fulfilled and satisfied, it also means to be conscious, conscious of the benefits that you've received. When you're thankful for somebody, if you've received something and you're conscious of it, you'll remember to thank somebody. Thank you. Well, we're, we're told not to forget his benefits in Psalm 103. It says, bless the Lord. The word blessed there from the word barak, it means to kneel, salute, to praise, give thanks. So thank the Lord, O oh my soul, and all, that is, all that's in, within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. And then he goes on to list them. Who forgives all your iniquities. Every one of them. Every one of them. Heals all your diseases. I'm thankful this morning had Mary Boney in service. She, a little over a year ago, was diagnosed with cancer. She saw me this morning. She goes, Pastor Ron, had a big grin on her face. She says, she says I'm in 100% remission. Come on. I call, that, I call that 100% healed. Come on, 100% healed. Who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. I love that tender mercies. I mean, come on. We can beg for mercy, and somebody can say, okay, I'll give it to you. I I love the tender mercies because God gives it to you with his love and his grace. New every morning. Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Give God praise for his word. If we're going to be thankful, we have to be thoughtful. We have to be mindful. Maybe we're not feeling thankful. If we're not feeling thankful, then we need to start thinking about God's goodness in my life. 
Stop thinking about the negative things and the what ifs, but think about, God, you are so good to me. God, you got me through that. You'll get me through this. Come on. God, you healed me there. You'll do this. God, you provided for me then. You'll provide for me here. I don't know how, Lord, but you can make a crooked place straight. Come on. You can make rivers in the desert. I don't know how, but Lord, I just give you thanks. Amen. Give you thanks. David was mindful when he was in the wilderness, and uh, his enemies after him, and Psalm 63, 5 says, my soul shall be satisfied. Think about it. If you're going to be thankful, you have to be thoughtful. He could think about all the negative that's happening around him. But he says this, my soul shall be satisfied as with the morrow and fatness, God's provision. And my soul shall praise you, give you thanks. My soul shall praise you with joyful lips when I remember you on my bed and meditate on you in the night watches, because you have been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of your wings, I will rejoice. We can, if we're going to be thankful, we have to be thoughtful. Lord, when I think about you, when I'm sitting and lying in my bed and I'm thinking about your goodness, Father, I begin to rejoice with my lips. I begin to feel, I begin to feel satisfied and full because of you. If you're going to be thankful, you have to be thoughtful. Amen? With Everything that's within us to stay thankful, we have to stay thoughtful. Colossians 6, 2, 6, as you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him rooted and built up. See, when, we, when we're thinking of him, meditating on him, when we're in the word, you know what we're doing? We're building ourselves up in him. We're building ourselves up in him. And it says, established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. When we are rooted and grounded in him, we will abound in thanksgiving. It's a process. It's a process of reminding yourself, thinking on his goodness and not thinking on the negative things. Philippians 4, 8, Paul says this. He says this, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report, sometimes it's good to turn the news off. If there's any virtue, I love that word, it means life-giving value. If there's any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Stop meditating on the things that aren't praiseworthy, that don't bring life into you, that don't bring joy into you. Think about his goodness, amen? If we're going to be thankful, we have to be thoughtful, thoughtful. Last point this morning is this. Don't be cheated out of thanksgiving. Anyone here ever been cheated? All of us at some point probably have. Are deceived about something. I remember years ago when Ava and I, it was actually before we got married, we wanted to, she needed a new car, and, and it was before we were married, she was actually going to take a trip to Dallas with the bridesmaid in the wedding, and she wanted, uh, she needed a car. So we went out and bought a used car. We saved up $2,500. That was a lot of money. And bought a used Audi Fox. <laughs> Don't ever buy an Audi Fox. Right. If you have one, we'll just pray it works well for you. But uh, first, she got it. She started, she drove to Dallas halfway there. She calls me and says, I don't understand. The motor's making an awful noise. It threw a rod. It was a mess, you know. I, I wasn't rooted and grounded in mechanics. I think I was 22 uh, years old at the time. I didn't know enough about cars. I just thought, hey, that's a good price. We'll buy it. But I felt dece deceived. Anybody ever trade in a car? You ever trade in a car? Come on. You feel like you got everything. You know, now, you know, it's crazy right now. But, I, I, you know, I remember trading in cars before and you go in there and they start beating it up, man. Oh, yeah. you, you ever go to trade in a car? I've done this. And then you wash it up and clean it and then you start looking at it and go, I think I'll keep that thing. <laughs> it looks pretty good. You'd have washed it a long time ago. And you think, man, you look, you know what it's worth. You go in there. And how many of you know they always want to give you what it's worth? Oh, yeah. They start beating it up. Eh, it's got too many miles on it. Look at that. It's got a scratch here, a dent here, you know, it's a piece of junk. <laughs> That's my car, you know. And maybe you end up trading it anyway because anyway, you got your eyes set on that new shiny thing, you know. But you know, the enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy. And he'll cheat you out of your joy. And he'll tell you you're not worth what you think you are. Come on. I'll tell you you've got too many miles on you. Come on, you don't. But let me tell you what God, God makes you complete. He makes you new. He restores you re brand new. Come on. He takes the scars away. Takes the scratches away. 
And, 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 but don't be cheated out of being thankful. Oh, yeah, I'm not worth anything. My man, if you knew what I did, don't let the enemy's lies and deception cheat you out of being thankful. Come on. Come on. Don't be cheated out of it. Don't, don't count all the negative things. Count your blessings. Everybody say, count your blessings. Count your blessings. Colossians 2, 6, listen to this. As you therefore have received Christ, Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. Put your head up. Walk in his grace. Rooted and built up in him. Get in the word. Know who you are in Christ. Established in the faith as you've been taught. Abounding in it with thanksgiving. Verse 8, look what it says. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of man. In other words, works and not grace. According to the basic principalities of the world and not according to Christ, don't be cheated out of being thankful and great, grateful. The word cheated, the Greek word there, salagogia, and it means to be carried off or stolen away. Satan came to do what? Steal, kill, and destroy. It means this, to be led away from the truth. Don't let the enemy lead you away from the truth of who you are in Christ and your value and your worth and tell you that you're not worth anything because you are. That you don't, that this is as good as your life's ever going to get. This is not meant for you. Maybe that's good for somebody else, but it's not good for you. Don't let the enemy bring deceit and cheat you out of being thankful. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Through philosophy, empty deceit, traditions of man, law. So Paul cautions. He's cautioning them to not forget God's goodness in your life, to recognize the scope of what Jesus did on the cross for you. To not be cheated out of all these things and not lose hope and joy. Stand with me. Don't be cheated because you're valuable, restored, made new and full of God's grace. He satisfies. He gives hope. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him. Everybody say complete. Who is the head of all principality and power. Complete in him. That, that word there means to make full, to cause to abound, to increase, to be furnished liberally with all supply. Father, we thank you so much. We thank you. We give you thanks. As we meditate, reflect, Remind ourselves of your goodness. And Father, even after all the things that we've gone through, and Father, the, we've all gone through different things and some of the same things. But Father, we're still standing. And we're thankful. Father, we're thankful for what you've done before you could do again. Father, let us abound in thanksgiving. Let thanksgiving be left over after everything that we could go through, Father. That we still see your goodness and your grace, knowing that it's your will to be mindful of your goodness, Father, and not allow the enemy to cheat us out of being thankful. For all things are for your sakes, that grace, having spread through many, may cause thanksgiving to abound. All of heaven rejoices when just one comes to know him. I'm thankful for the baptisms of those that are saved. It causes thanksgiving to abound. Nothing causes heaven to rejoice more than when one person comes into the kingdom of God. That's what we can be thankful about. And it causes thanksgiving to abound when his grace spreads through many. If you're here today, I want to pray for you to receive God's grace. You see, it's not by works. It's not by the tradition of men, but it's by his grace that we're saved. Don't be cheated out of being thankful. But if you're here today and you say, Pastor Ron, would you pray for me? I want to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Let grace abound. Where sin abounds, grace abounds even more, the Bible says. Let grace abound. Pastor Ron, would you pray for me? And I want to pray for you right where you are. I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Or maybe you say, I I've been away from God, and I want to come back into a right relationship with him. His grace abounds. So if you're here and you say, Pastor Ron, pray for me. If you're online and you say, Pastor Ron, pray for me, God sees you there. 
I want to know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, or I want to come back into a right relationship with Him, I want to pray for you before you leave. I want grace to abound. If that's you, would you just acknowledge that with an uplifted hand and say, Pastor Ron, that's me. I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior this morning. I don't want to miss you. Just lift a hand up and say, that's me. I want to say thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I'm going to pray for you right where you are in just a moment. Let's all say this prayer together. Say, Father God, I thank you with all my heart. I'm thankful that you love me so much that you sent your son Jesus to die on a cross for me. And I take you at your word that says if I believe that in my heart and I confess it with my mouth, I'll be saved by your grace. I believe that right now I'm your child and I'll spend eternity with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Give him praise. Give him thanks this morning. Amen. Listen, I'm so thankful you said that prayer. And if you're online you said it, get a hold of us. Let us know. Email us, text us. Let us know. But we're going to have prayer partners up here in a minute when Pastor Mark comes. Come let somebody know. Come pray. If you need healing, come pray. He's a healing God. Amen. God bless you. All right. Good morning, Light family. Hey, so uh, how many are thankful for Pastor Ron and Pastor Ava? Amen. As the prayer team comes up, I want you to know that we are always up here on Sundays for your benefit. Don't go out of here the same way you came in. As Pastor Ron uh, shared this morning that Mary Boney is 100% in remission. Also, Sonia Sanford that did the donut holes for us is also in 100% remission. So, so God is moving. Amen. Amen. And also, too, let me just add to this. Pastor Ava prayed for a woman that came up last Sunday. She could hardly move her neck. She was in excruciating pain and could barely turn her neck. And she found Pastor, Pastor Sarah on Radiance Night and told her that she was healed and she could move it fine. So give God praise for that. After first service, uh, the family member did not come up here but I caught them on the way out and got to pray for him. Somebody was struggling really hard. And do you know God got them before they even got out the door? Amen. So if you're struggling with anything this morning, if it's a cold, God takes care of everything from cold to cancer. Amen. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for today. Praise you and we honor you on this Thanksgiving coming up this Thursday. We bless you. We are grateful and thankful. Lord, bless everyone in here as they go. Let them have a wonderful Thanksgiving. And everyone said, Amen. You're dismissed.